everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of today's best stock picks. Big day today. Today we have Tesla. Everybody's got Tesla on their mind. Been the biggest question, feedback, email, uh, everything that people have been asking for this week. Uh, earnings so far have not been awesome, and I don't think that should be shocking anybody. Uh, the bigger stocks that we've been watching recently have taken a hit, Netflix probably being one of the biggest ones that hasn't recovered yet. Uh, so what are we going to expect out of Netflix? We're going to map out a trade today. Uh, is it priced in already? Well, we had a massive run up and then a week of consolidating. Um, is it priced in? We're going to take a look at the charts. We also have Microsoft today, uh, which has been at or near all-time highs and has been kind of one of the market leaders, which the NASDAQ has been leading the market. Uh, Microsoft right up there, which is kind of a throwback to the old days, right? Um, for me, anyway, when I started trading in 2000. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive. First, I want to talk, though, we're going we're gonna to cover a recent swing trade that we had. Hopefully, you still have it with us. It performed nicely yesterday, despite the fact that the market's been a little bit choppy. Well, yesterday was super choppy. Monday wasn't yesterday. It was Yesterday was much more of a day, if you happen to be day trading, to be managing your orders. We kept saying, work your orders, work your orders, and preserve your capital. Good thing we did yesterday afternoon when the market got smacked a little bit and closed on the lows. Uh, futures are coming back a little bit, but if you were day trading yesterday afternoon and disciplined, hopefully you were, uh, especially um, with the way the market sold off, it was unforgiving. It, it didn't really bounce in the afternoon, which is not what it's done recently. There's been a uh, bid below the market holding it up. Uh, you're in a good position then. You didn't lose that much money. If anything, hopefully you booked your profits uh, prior to that or scaled out when we saw the market turn. So uh, just a quick note, if you like the channel and you find these picks helpful, definitely leave some feedback below uh, if you uh, have some winners over some of the calls that we have. And I've been getting some really, really nice um, comments in previous videos. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because then you'll get updates and you'll get some new calls. We've got a really good educational video coming out today as well. Uh, and if you really want to take this deeper, uh, definitely click down and learn about the boot camp and we can trade together in real time. So let's actually hit the charts uh, and we'll take a look at um, some of the best opportunities uh, today. We're actually going to start out with um, this uh, Cardinal Health because I want to point out this is a situation where a lot of traders get in trouble, uh, where they're, they're, they're looking at a stock that has uh, exploded, for lack of a better way of putting it, which obviously exploded is relative, but you can see here on the right, uh, the stock is up very strong over the last week and a half. And this is where a trader will, I want to buy the stock because it's moving. I don't want to miss out. I need to get in on it because, and then you end up buying at the top after the stock has already traveled for eight days in a row. This is a good long and good is relative. I'm not going to get into the whole multiple time frame analysis and learning how to read the tape right now. It's a good idea. Can definitely day trade the stock if it follows through today, but it's not a new swing trade because it's already traveled what it normally does and it's coming into resistance where the reward potential is lower. So I'm looking for the stock to pause, maybe one more day higher, pause for a few days before it looks to take off again. So if you're, if you're actively trading and you find yourself getting stuck in some positions where you're like, what am I doing? This stock is strong. It seems every time I buy it, I, I, all these ideas, they, they lose money immediately. Just pay attention to that little bit of tape reading where you say, am I buying it too late? Because uh, there's a difference between is it a buy and is it a buy now? And hopefully that was a little bit of a um, lesson for you there. So anyway, Tesla, obviously we had this monster run. Every all you read about was squeezing the shorts. Um, I, honestly, I don't know why anybody would want to be short this stock. It just keeps going higher and higher. Uh, if anything, it's looking for a spot to buy lower until the story changed. Now, could the story change today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the stock is trading between 1450 and 1650. That's a big range. So really for me, the trade is as long as the stock is above 1650, I'm going to look to continue to be long. We'll wait to see what happens with earnings today. If you're going to be trading the stock today or holding it into earnings, man, that's been a really tough trade lately. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily know that I'd be doing that. I'm not suggesting anybody in our community do it. And so far we've been options. Uh, prior to earnings coming out and hoping the earnings are good. Yeah, you can, you can hit it, but you can't trade in the vacuum. You have to pay attention to what's going on in the world right now. And especially, don't forget, this earnings is going forward. You're buying next quarter's earnings, not last quarter's earnings. Uh, so you're, you're buying the future value of what's going to happen. They're going to report what happened, but if you buy the stock today, you have to listen to guidance of what they're expecting. So those are my levels. If it's above 1650, 
uh, I'm going to be aggressively getting in there. If it's below that 1450 level, uh, I'm going to really wait for some signs of life if I want to be long again. But let's make it clear, I'm not looking to short sell the stock. Microsoft, obviously another one, big market leader right now. It keeps trading at or near these all-time highs. Seems to be having a hard time getting above 212. So that's really the level I'm going to be watching after hours today is that 212 level. How much active buying comes in at 212 and does it actively stay there? Again, with these stocks that are super strong, there's no reason to short them. Don't get cute. Just look for a spot and a reason. Build that argument. Look for a reason to be a buyer. And for me right now in Microsoft, above 212 is the level. So I just want to talk about the SPY for a minute just to discuss the levels in the SPY. This is obviously the pre-FOMC announcement high, uh, which happened on June 10th. And then we got clobbered there and kind of got, basically did nothing for, <laughs> for the better part of a few weeks. Uh, it was very challenging here. But now we, we keep sniffing this level again. Uh, and and um, how can I word this? There, everybody you speak to, it doesn't matter whether it's Mark Cuban or Ray Dalio, everybody, just go, YouTube it and Google it. The Fed is pumping money into the market right now. It's not necessarily a market where we are trading 100% uh, off of earnings right now and saying the earnings are pushing the market higher. That's not the case. There's a giant bid under the market uh, and it's very hard to short sell that. So any dips right now are potential buying opportunities. And this level, this 325 level in the market, maybe 323 is the level in the sand that we're gonna be watching as a longer term tape reader to say, do we still want to continue to be long. So some other opportunities today, we want to mention space. We've actually called this out as a swing trade breaking out. And we had 28 as our first target. Yesterday got up to 26 and change, still looking to be long the stock. The way it's trading, uh, I'm probably going to end up scaling out of a decent portion of that trade at the 28 level. So congratulations uh, if you got involved with that last week. Um, IBM is interesting. It's not a stock that I normally trade Earnings were interpreted as good, had this monster gap up. But you can also see here that, again, what we're talking about some of these stocks, what is the stock doing just prior to earnings? Uh, and was that priced in already? So we saw a big sell-off after a big gap up yesterday in IBM. I think at one point it was up three, three and a half percent, which is a pretty big move for that stock in one day. So today, the trade I'm looking for in IBM today, excuse me, I think I might have some micros, IBM, is we're looking for a test of yesterday's low to look to be a buyer for those buyers of the earnings gap to come back in and looking for it to retest yesterday's price action. Uh, a stock that I do not normally trade, but came up in my scan that looks super interesting, a little bit lighter uh, trading activity, not something I would be day trading at all. It's something I'm gonna keep on my radar now for an active swing trade, CODX. We had what I would call an energy candlestick that's also a fuel candlestick, which is a large body candlestick with volume breaking out of a trading range. I'm going to have this on my radar. I'm not calling for a trade for today. Uh, if we open flat uh, and the buying in the market starts to rally a little bit, then I'll look to start to build a position. So I'm not, heading, I'm not intending to go into the market looking to uh, aggressively buy it. I am looking to start building a position, provided it stays above that $20 level. That's the big number that I need to pay attention to. And obviously, it closed significantly above that. So really, that's, that's the circumstance. If uh, any time a stock breaks out, the stop loss is pretty simple. It shouldn't go back into where it just broke out from. So that's on the list. Uh, I know has been, honestly, has been relatively frustrating to trade. It keeps having these bounces and come back in, bounce and come back in. Uh, you would think that's distribution type price action because when it gets active and doesn't follow through, that's usually attracting moths to the flame uh, where the smart money's getting out of the stock. Uh, so we'll see. And, and obviously you could take that a step further and take a look at the volume. Volume is not exactly um, super obvious. If this was pretty super clear distribution, we would see this churning with much higher volume. And it is higher volume, but not super clear. So here's my point. My point is as a trader, as a tape reader, you need to say something changed. And right now, buying these breakouts in this particular stock is a very good way to get churned without making a dime and draining your account. So the better trade right now is a close on the daily chart above 28. If you want to initiate a smaller piece of your trade between 27 and 28 and then add over 28, that's the better idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, hopefully you got some of this as well. This was a trade that we called out last week on the breakout. Um, CWH, Camping World, followed through yesterday and closed pretty strong on a day the market <coughs> um, was, was weaker. So again, percentage move 28 to 38, bigger move. 
probably a better job executing that on the exit because a $10 move is a big, big move for this stock on the breakout trading down a little bit today. If you get a chance today and the stock bounces and it's a swing trade, I'd probably myself be looking to uh, exit. A couple of stocks that um, popped up today. That, again, I don't normally trade uh, and you can see why there's not a lot of smart money institutional activity every day, but Dick's Sporting Goods, and you know, we've been talking about the get outside stocks that have been bouncing quite a bit lately and showing some relative strength. Basically the trade here is as long as it's above 42, we're looking for 50. Uh, next one, we're looking at WPM, which was called out in the community yesterday. Just a really, really good job by everybody there yesterday being on top of this one. Finally broke through 47, got up to 52. Probably not a great swing trade at this point because it's already gone $5. Uh, I would say that if you want to initiate a swing trade and 47 being your stop loss below 47, you could do that, but that's $4 away. I'm not sure you really want to risk $4 in this stock, and it's actually scheduled to open higher this morning. So again, maybe if you're an active day trader and, it, and bids come back in, you can day trade it. But I love the pause up in this level to initiate the next swing trade. Uh, and next we have uh, Cardinal Health, which is what we actually just discussed. So um, that's our list of ideas for today. Uh, it's a little bit mixed because of the big earnings with Tesla and Microsoft. Um, stick to the list that you have. And, and, and here's why I want to I bring this up. The market has clearly changed. The tape has clearly changed. Yes, the SPY ETF is traveling higher and looks great as far as a, um, a, a price number. Like, oh gosh, it's up this percent. If you look under the hood, that's not what we're seeing. The stocks that we were buying uh, with absolute conviction about a month ago are not, uh, even two weeks ago, are not showing the same strength. I'm talking about FSLY, DocuSign, D-Dog, um, all of those, uh, w Wayfair, uh, Square, PayPal, they're not showing the strength, the same absolute buy every dip, don't worry about it, the market, there's, there's wind behind your back. It's not the same right now. So we're starting to see a little bit of a change. And we're, we're seeing the change to outdoor stocks, like we've been calling out Lowe's, Home Depot, those kind of Pulte Homes, Lennar especially. Um, be aware of sector rotation and manage your trade expectation in accordance with what we're seeing under the hood. And that's really what it means to be a tape reader. Have a great day, everybody.